Hi guys, if you're new here, welcome, and if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Let's get into this video. So this is my very first time ever doing a tutorial, so I'm a little nervous, but I hope it goes well. And I tried to make this as beginner friendly as possible, and so I like went through and described how to do things. And if you need like, if you don't need all those like instructions on how to do everything and you're a little bit like more experienced as a crocheter, I do plan on releasing a PDF pattern on my Etsy soon. I have the pattern right now. I have to edit it a little bit more, but then I'll get it out on my Etsy soon. And so it's probably not my Etsy at the time that this video will come out, but in the future I will have it on there. And so you can go and follow my Etsy shop so you can get a notification whenever that pattern comes out. But I hope that this is beginner friendly. I don't know, I'm not, I'm terrible at explaining things. And so maybe it's not beginner friendly, but I do think if you're a visual learner, I did things slowly so you guys can see what I was doing. But I hope you guys are ready to get into this tutorial and make this adorable bee. I'm really excited. This is actually the first pattern that I ever made, which is, I don't know, it's not really impressive because bees are like pretty straightforward on how to make them. Like it's just a cylinder. But I think it's a like bees are just great beginner projects because of how simple they are to do. And so, and you get practice with things like sewing because you get to sew on the wings. It's not anything major. And you get like um, practice with color changes. And so I think it is really a great project if you're a beginner. And so let's go over all the materials that you're gonna need for this project. So obviously for this bee, you're gonna need some yarn. So you're gonna need yarn in yellow, black, white, and then if you plan on doing blush, you need pink and the blush is this part under the eyes. And if you don't plan on doing blush, you don't need the pink yarn, but I'm gonna be using Big Twist Posh Yarn from Joann's for this bee. And so that's what I use for this one also. So if you want yours to look like this, you can use the uh, Big Twist Posh Yarn also. And then you're gonna need a crochet hook and I have a five millimeter clover hook, which is like my go-to hook size for posh yarn and also for like a uh, parfait chunky which is also a very popular choice and then you're gonna need two safety eyes and i believe these are 16 millimeter i could be wrong i don't label my safety eyes but i, I think they look about 16 millimeter and so i'm just gonna say that's what size they are <laughs> but yeah i kind of just eyeball and like i'll put the eyes on and then be like that looks right and so you're also gonna need a stitch marker and so I have one here, which I made. Isn't that just a moment of silence for this one? It's not focusing. But isn't it so cute? If you've watched Gravity Falls, you know what that is. But if you haven't, you're just a little weirded out probably. And then you're also going to need some scissors and some stuffing. And I forgot to grab stuffing. But I think you guys know what you need. And so I recommend using polyfill. I actually don't have polyfill fill right now um but i have like a giant box of other stuffing let me go get it and i'll show you what brand it is so this is the stuffing that i'm using i got it for 15 dollars at hobby lobby and so for those of you guys that were curious that's what i will be using but polyfill you can get that like i think joann's i haven't seen it at my michaels but other michaels might have polyfill hobby lobby walmart like i don't know you can probably get polyfill at any like craft store because it's like the most popular choice, I'd say, among crocheters. And so I think that's all the supplies that you're gonna be needing. Oh, you're also, I forgot one thing. You're gonna need a tapestry like yarn needle uh, to sew on the wings with. And then that, I'm pretty sure, is all the materials. If I'm forgetting something, let me know in the comments. But let's go ahead and get into this tutorial and hopefully it goes well. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start out with round one, and for that round, we're just going to do a magic ring, which I'm going to explain how to do, because it can be kind of daunting for those of you who don't know how to do it. So, okay, I'm not going to be explaining anything right now. So what I like to do, oh my god, sorry, my crochet hook is rolling off my table right now, but I take two fingers, and I grab the yarn like this, and then I just wrap it around twice. So there's two like strands of yarn on this side of your hand and then there's kind of like three-ish on this side and then you just hold it like that and so that's what mine looks like so you can take a moment and just like look at that and then make sure yours looks like that and then I'm also just holding this yarn with my pinky like that and so this is just how I do it let me grab my crochet hook 
but there are a lot of other tutorials on YouTube on how to do magic rings. And so if this way is too complicated for you or you need it like more thoroughly explained, feel free to like watch any other tutorials and just find a way that works for you because it took me some trial and error to like find out a way that actually works for me. And so what I like to do is just stick my crochet hook in there and I'm just holding my yarn with my pinky and then I just grab the yarn like that, pull it through, and then I chain one like that. And I hope I'm going slow enough, I don't know. So now that you've chained one, we're gonna single crochet seven into this magic ring. And so how you do that, or how I do it, which some people don't use like their finger, like they don't have the magic ring on their fingers. They just like have a loop and they're holding it like this, which if you want to do that too, that works. But this is just the way that I do it. So I have this yarn like kind of on my fingers and then I'm just holding my uh, working yarn with my pinky and I just go in like that and then I'm actually just doing this horribly and then like that and then you just single crochet. And so I hope Am I doing this right? I really hope I'm doing this right because honestly, I'm, I feel like whenever I'm really doing this slowly, I don't know if I'm doing it right, you know? Because I'm so used to like going pretty fast. I just, I hope I'm going slow enough. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Let me know in the comments because this is my first tutorial. And I'm losing count of how many stitches I just did. So I one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and so let me just count that back and if you're like a really really beginner it can be like kind of hard to see your stitches with like if you're using plush yarn but you just look at these little v shapes and those are your stitches and so you have one here two here three here four five six and seven so i did count right okay so your magic ring should look something like this and that is how you do it but you're probably wondering how do you like this isn't a magic ring this doesn't look like a ring at all but here's the magic part so what i like to do is you see you have these two strands of yarn right here and so one of them is in the front one of them is in the back when you're holding this is the right way your magic ring is supposed to look so this is the front of it and then this is what the back looks like and so whenever whenever you're looking at the front here and you turn it to the side you should have this strand of yarn in the front, this strand of yarn in the back. And so what I like to do is I like to pull the strand of yarn that's in the front and be very careful with plush yarn. The way that I like to close it off to like prevent it from snapping kind of, I don't know, it's not foolproof I would say, but it's just the way that I do it is like I just hold it backwards whenever I'm pulling the yarn and I just like pinch right here and I ease it out, like no tugging or anything. And as you're pulling the strand of yarn, you should see the magic ring start to close, you see? And so that's pretty awesome. And then we're not done because you have like these random pieces of yarn. And so you're probably wondering, what do you do with that? And so what you do is you pull this yarn, oh, I lost it, this yarn tail right here. And again, just ease it out, don't be too rough. I've snapped so many magic rings, like it's not even funny. And so I don't mess around with this. I'm actually about to snap this again. Wouldn't that be so unfortunate if I just snapped it right now? Yeah, um, okay, so we're not going to close that, actually, which is fine. Like, if you don't close your magic ring, you can just leave it like this. You're just going to have a lot of extra yarn tails, but, you know, if you can pull this string, like, that would be great, and then your magic ring will be finished, but unfortunately, my yarn is going to snap, and so I'm not going to finish it off completely, but that is kind of like what you're supposed to do for round one. And if you, like me, were not able to close your magic ring, that is completely fine. As long as you can like uh, do the first part that we just did and close it off so it looks like this. But you know, that's gonna be fine. But now let's move on to round two. So for round two, we're gonna be doing what's called an increase round, which means that we're gonna be putting an increase, which is two single crochets into one stitch just all the way around so we're gonna do seven increases and i'll just show you how, how we're gonna do that and so here's my first stitch right here and the way that you can find your first stitch is just counting back seven so one two three four five six and seven and so that's the first stitch and then we're just gonna single crochet 
one. And then, so we did one single crochet, and I'm gonna get my stitch marker, and I'm just gonna put it on that first stitch, just like that. And then, we're gonna go back into this very same stitch, and then you're gonna single crochet again. In a way that helps me to keep track of like my like counting, I guess, is I usually do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I kind of just uh, do that all the way around until I get to 10 or 14 in this case. And also the way that you count rounds is just like the magic ring counts as a round and then all these little like little, um, I guess you call them like lines or bumps or whatever you want to call them. I'll show you whenever we get more into like the B and so there's more rounds, but that's a round, this is a round. And so that's just how you count rounds. But for round three, we're going to be doing one single crochet and then an increase. And so how you do that is you just single crochet into this first stitch and put your stitch marker. Don't forget your stitch marker. It's very important. So one single crochet and then you just do an increase into this next stitch. So one single crochet and then increase. And also if you're having like a hard time trying to find the stitch that you just went into, like you kind of just need to look at where this stitch is and then just go right into like the same piece. Like this right here. Yeah, let me get my camera to focus. Uh, okay, so like this right here, it might look like another stitch, but it is the same stitch. And so this is the next stitch and this is the stitch you're like the same stitch that you just went into. And so just go into that stitch again. So you have one single crochet and then an increase, and then you go one single crochet, and then an increase. Okay, so I just finished round three. And as you can see, you can tell which round we're on. So magic ring counts as one round, two rounds, and three rounds. So you should have ended this round with an increased stitch. And if you didn't, you may have done something wrong. And so I would go back and count your stitches. And if the stitches don't line up with the number of stitches that are on the screen, then you might have done something wrong. And that's totally fine. I literally just had to undo this because I did something wrong in the last round. And so you guys might have caught that. I didn't do an increase stitch in the very last stitch of the last round. And so I had to cut the video and redo my round. But we made it. We survived, you know? And that is totally fine if you have to redo it. Like, I've been crocheting for years and I still make mistakes. And so that is totally fine. And yeah, the magic ring is a demonstration of that also. <laughs> and so it looks fine though. See, you don't have to close off the magic ring all the way, but you do have all these extra strings. So it is more convenient if you do close it off all the way. But in our case, we were not able to. So let's move on to round four. In this round, you're gonna be doing two single crochets and an increase. But before you do that, I'm gonna show you a little way that I like to avoid having like whenever you're crocheting a lot of rounds of increases, you get like these little points that start forming and it's not like a perfect circle anymore. And so I'm gonna show you how, like what I do to avoid that. And so what I like to do is I like to break up the round a little bit. And so the pattern we're following for this round is two single crochet and an increase. But I like to split like the first part and I'm gonna explain this horribly. So I'm just actually gonna show you. And so I like to do one single crochet, stitch marker, add your stitch marker. Don't forget the stitch marker. So one single crochet and then you do an increase. Okay, and once you start off the round like that, you're gonna just continue with our normal pattern of doing two single crochet and an increase. 
And so you're gonna continue doing that until you get to the very last stitch. And whenever you get to the end of the round, you should do an increase and then you should have one single crochet left. And that's just, I don't know. That's a way that I like to afford, uh, avoid, sorry, having uh, those points. Cause they're kind of, I don't know, they're not very pretty looking whenever you get the point on the end. Cause it's no longer like a circle and it's kind of like a, I don't know, like an octagon or whatever shape not great with shapes i failed geometry so got personal sorry <laughs> and so you have one single crochet and increase and then you go one two and then an increase round and as you can see i have one single crochet left so i'm going to go ahead and just single crochet into there and so that's like a way of just breaking up the rounds so it's not like a pattern each and every time and then like the increases just form points and so that is just how i like to avoid having those bumps and you can choose to do this or if it's easier for you you can just do two single crochet increase all the way around but you might get those bumps. I don't know. But if you want to avoid those bumps, you can do the round like I did it. It doesn't really matter. Just That's just my preference. But you can do whatever. And then moving on to round five. We're going to just do single crochets all the way around for this round. And so that's pretty simple. And we're going to actually do that for the next two rounds. So for rounds four and... In, or not four but five and six we're gonna do just single crochet around and so let's go ahead and get started so i'm coming to the last stitch on round six so i've already done one round of single crochets and then like uh, one round, another round of single crochets, but I'm on the last stitch of that second round of single crochets, and we're gonna change the colors right now. So go ahead and get your black yarn ready. So I got mine right there, and we're just gonna start off the single crochet. So we're gonna put our hook in there, gonna grab up a loop, and then we're gonna get our black yarn, and we're just gonna kind of attach it on here. Just and then you're gonna put on your hook like that and then just pull through those two stitches. And then you can pull this thing to, this yarn end to tighten it a little bit. And then you're gonna hold on to the yarn end of the black yarn with that hand. And then you're just gonna kind of single crochet around like that. And then don't forget your stitch marker. And there is gonna be like a slight little like, I don't know, like divot, I guess, where you change colors. But that's going to be on the bottom of the B, so it's not going to be super noticeable. There are some videos, like, that teach ways how to prevent this little divot from happening. But I'm just too lazy to do that. And so I'm just going to live with the little, like, color switch, like, line, I guess. And so now we're going to just do two more rounds of single crochets. So for round seven and eight, we're just going to single crochet around in black yarn. And once you get to the end of round eight... Um, whenever you get to the last stitch, you're going to change colors back to yellow again. And I'll show you how to do that again, just because color changing can be a little daunting, I understand. And, uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, this is going to be really hard to see, because black yarn is just, it's really hard to see your stitches with black yarn. And so I should have worked in a different color, but I didn't. So we're just going to do with, with this what we can. So you have one more stitch left. I'm just gonna try to explain it to you because it's just so hard to see. But I have one stitch left. I'm on round eight right now. And so I've done two rounds of the black and one of my last stitch. And so we're just gonna single crochet like normal. Don't finish it off. And then I'm gonna grab my yellow yarn, which by the way, I forgot to mention this earlier. I did not cut off my like yarn. Cause usually I just, you're just reattaching it. So I see no point like, for, like uh, in cutting it out off. 
So I just wait until I'm like fully done with color changes to cut off the yarn. But if you already cut your yarn off, like that's fine. That's totally fine. But yeah, you just pull it through. And I used to like to leave a little bit of slack on the yarn whenever I'm color changing. So it's not like too like stiff or anything. And then you just continue with two rounds of single crochets like we've been doing. And on the second round of single crochets, before you finish off your last stitch, you're going to switch to black yarn. And then once you do two more rounds of single crochets with black yarn, you're going to uh, don't finish off your last stitch in your second single crochet round. And then switch to yellow and then two rounds of yellow. And then I'll see you guys whenever you finish that. And I hope I explained that all very well. And then we're going to put our eyes on. So now that you have made it all the way through round 14, your bee should look something like this. And so I know I didn't explain super well what to do, and so I'm just going to go ahead and explain here what I already did. So you did two rows of single crochet here, and then you switched to black at the end of this round, and then you did two more rounds of single crochets, switched to yellow, two more single crochet rounds, switched to black, two more single crochet rows, and then switched to yellow again, and then did two... Uh, more single crochet look rows and then those were our last two rows of single crochets and so in total you should have two four six eight ten ten rows of single crochets and two or four of those rounds should be in black and then six of them should be in yellow so I hope that makes sense um, and I hope I explained it a little better there than I did before and so now we're gonna go ahead and add the uh, safety eyes and there's actually a bee flat or not a bee but a fly flying around my room right now and so if you can hear it buzzing i'm so sorry oh my god and there it is making an appearance on camera oh my god that's hilarious i was literally just talking about it it knew and so we're gonna be putting our safety eyes um between rounds four and five and you want to make sure that the parts where we switch colors is on the bottom those flies there's like two of them they're like fighting oh my god but you want to make sure this part is on the bottom of your bee and so it just kind of turned up like this. And this this is going to be where the eyes are going to go. My goodness. I'm actually going to have to come kill these flies. Sorry, but I have to. So one, two, three, four. So this is round four and this is round five. And so you're going to put them in these rounds somewhere. And so I'm just going to put mine right there. And then you want them to be... Oh my god, this fly. It just keeps wanting to get on camera. But um, you're going to put them nine stitches apart. And so... Oh my goodness, they're actually, oh, flies are attracted to light, aren't they? I have like a ring light attached to this camera. That actually makes so much sense now. I was like, why are they so attracted to this camera? And so, okay, so that part is on the bottom. And I'm going to count just how many stitches they are apart. And so, I don't think I'm going to count that one. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four. Okay. Right. That better maybe those might be too far now okay but one two three four five why is it still seven i'm not counting something right <laughs> okay i have my other bee here and i'm just gonna compare where the eyes are we need to go just up one more stitch okay i'm just comparing so there's this one, and then here's this. And so, I think that looks good, actually. And so, this is what it looks like. This one's kind of sticking out a little bit. And so, let me just kind of count for you. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, maybe, like, more like eight stitches apart rather than nine. Depends. I don't know. But, yeah. So, you can pause the video here and kind of count the stitches between the eyes and see if yours are the same way and then I'm going to go ahead and get the backs for these safety eyes and I'm just going to pop those on okay I always struggle so much with this like they make like little like guns I guess that you're not guns but like little things that you can like literally like attach to here and then like you just squeeze the like uh, lever of it and then it just puts the safety eyes on for you I think that would be so helpful, and so I'm actually going to need to invest in one of those, because I think that would be so helpful. Okay, one more back in. Oh, that one went on so much more easily. Okay, so we have our eyes on our bee, and it's looking so cute, and so now we're going to begin the decrease rounds. 
So we're beginning round uh, 15 right now, and so this is our first decrease round. And I'm going to show you how to do a decrease in just a minute, but I'm going to explain what we're doing. So we're going to do um, a round of two single crochets and then a decrease. And we're going to kind of do the same pattern that we did with the two single crochet increase round. And we're going to be kind of splitting off the round the same way that we did it. And so I'm going to go ahead and explain how to do that. So take off your stitch marker and then just do one single crochet into the stitch. And then put your stitch marker back on there because you don't want to forget it. And so the next round we're going to do um, a decrease. And I do an, an invisible decrease because I just like doing that. And I think it looks better. So I would highly recommend doing an invisible decrease if you're able to. If you prefer a regular decrease, you can go ahead and do that also. I have never made one of these bees doing a regular decrease. So I don't know how it would look but I just highly recommend doing an invisible decrease. And the way that you do that is, so you see on this stitch, you have two like kind of sides to the V. Let me, hold on. Let me pull my hook out real quick. So you have two like sides to the V. So this loop right here, this is considered the front loop. So whenever you see the abbreviation on patterns that says FLO, that means front loop only. And so that's the front loop. That's what that is talking about then. And this is the back loop. So whenever you see the abbreviation BLO, that is a uh, back loop only. And so those are your two like loops in the terms for them. And so what you do with an invisible decrease, put your hook back on there. You get the two front loops of the, or the front loops of the next two stitches. So I have a front loop on my hook there. And then I go ahead and grab the next one. And then you grab your yarn and then you just pull through both of those and then you kind of just continue like a regular single crochet and so you did one single crochet and then an invisible decrease and then we're going to continue with the pattern of two single crochets and one invisible decrease um, until you get to the very last stitch and then you'll just do one single crochet Okay, so I just did my last invisible decrease and you should have one stitch left. That fly is still flying around me. It's a paid actor, okay? And then you just do one more single crochet into that last stitch. And then you did your very first decrease round. You should be proud of yourself. And so we're gonna move on to our next decrease round, which we're gonna do one single crochet and then an invisible decrease all the way around until you get to the very end. Don't forget to put your stitch marker. If you ever do forget to put your stitch marker, you can just look at where the color changes are and you see this stitch right here. That's the very first uh, stitch in your round because that's the first stitch that you did in yellow. As you can see, it kind of like cuts off right there and then that's the first stitch you did in yellow. So you just kind of track it up and you know that this is your first stitch. And so that's a way that you can know what your first stitch is even if you did not put your stitch marker in. Once you go ahead and finish up that round of one single crochet and visible decrease, you're gonna go ahead and pull out your hook and make sure you have like a loop so that you don't lose your last stitch. And so we're gonna start stuffing now. And so I have this much stuffing, it's like not a lot. But I did go out and buy some more, and it's not polyfill, which I always buy polyfill. And so I'm going to try it out because I don't think this, the polyfill I have left is enough. It might be, but I really doubt it. And so you can stuff it as much as you can right now. And then you can do some more stuffing after the next round, which the next round is just going to be decreases. So go ahead and stuff, and then we're going to go ahead and do those rounds. And then we're going to tie it off and do the wings. So not a lot left to do. You guys have made it so far. I'm proud of you guys. Okay, I have this massive box of this off-brand stuffing. It looks, it feels just like a giant cotton ball. And so we're gonna try it, I guess. Yeah, it looks a lot different than polyfilm, but I don't know, I'm scared. I don't know, it feels so different from polyfilm and I don't know if I like it. <laughs> But it was only $15 for like a big box of it at Hobby Lobby. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Okay. 
and I always like to stuff my things until they're pretty firm and I always like to like, kind of feel around the inside of like my plushies to like see if there's any empty spaces and so I think that is pretty good this is what it's looking like it's so cute I'm actually lo in love with it I feel like the eyes or that's actually the bottom of it oops or no the eyes are actually fine I was like they're a little like too low but no I'm holding it the wrong way so it's looking so cute and so we're going to go ahead and do the next round. So go ahead and put your hook back in. And we're going to do the next round of just decreases. So just invisible decrease all the way around. And I'll see you guys whenever it's finished. Okay, so I already finished my uh, last round. And so I'm going to go ahead and just add... A little bit more stuffing. I don't need a ton because I was able to get quite a bit of stuffing in the last round. But just squeeze a little bit more in there. Because one thing that I have found over the years that I've been crocheting is that stuffing deflates over time. And so, like, it might feel firm now. But whenever it's been sitting for, like, a while, the stuffing kind of just makes it kind of more squishy and so over time it will be more squishy in case you don't want your stuff used to be too firm and so they will be squishy over time but you don't want them to be like too overly squishy that they're just like completely like flat and like super deflated and so I definitely recommend stuffing your plushies very very firmly and so I mean definitely there is a thing as over like uh there is such a thing as overstuffing but I I come close to overstuffing, I feel like, at times. But you can go ahead and get your sewing needle right now and some scissors, and we're going to go ahead and close off this hole. Okay, so you're going to get your scissors, and you're going to cut, like, a tail. You don't need it to be super long, but I get it if you do want it to be super long. I'm definitely notorious for cutting, like, my yarn way longer than it needs to be. And so you're just going to go ahead and pull the yarn through like that. My yarn tail is like, I can't show it all on camera, but it's like, I'd say almost a foot long. Maybe it is a foot. I'm not sure. <laughs> and then you're going to just thread your needle like that. And then the way that we're going to close off this hole is we're just going to go through the front loops of these stitches. And so it could be kind of hard to like find the front loops, like whenever everything's kind of like inward and like that's fine if you're unable to get into the front loop like if you just put your sewing needle into like the whole stitch i'm pretty sure that works too but i just find that it's probably better if you find the front loop and so what you're going to do is you're just going to thread your needle through all of the front loops and actually my needle is about to unthread oops and so that one and you have seven stitches and so just maybe count as you're threading through to make sure you didn't miss a stitch so I already got one, two, three, oops, I just hit the camera, four, five, six, and seven. So you got all of them, and then all you do is you just pull it. And this went a lot more smoothly, smoothly than whenever we were closing off the magic ring. We know how that went, not well. And then I just like to put my needle in through the center and then just pull it, or put it out somewhere. Random, doesn't have to be anywhere special. And then you just kind of pull that and then you just kind of, I like to sew the yarn in, make it kind of blend in with your stitches. And this like doesn't, I keep hitting the camera, I'm so sorry. But it doesn't need to like be super secure because like that part doesn't usually come like it doesn't come undone without a fight i would say and so unless you're like intentionally trying to like undo the bottom of this thing it's not gonna just come like undone on its own and then you can go ahead and just cut off the yarn like that and then your bee body is closed off and now we're going to go ahead and get some white yarn and we're going to go ahead and get started on the wings. Okay, so we're going to get some white yarn and we're going to start on these wings. And I will say the insect problem uh, has been dealt with. And I won't go into detail about how I handled that. But let's just say if there's any like insect activists watching this, if that's such a thing, I'm so sorry. 
but they chose war. So, anyways, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to start a magic ring. And I should actually probably explain this again because it was, I don't know, it's kind of terrifying doing a magic ring. And it can be so confusing. And so, we're just going to single crochet seven into this magic ring. And so, what I like to do is just wrap it around my finger like that. And so, you have two strands of yarn on, uh, on this side of your finger and on this side of the finger your finger you have three strands and then you're just holding the yarn you're like working yarn is what you call this which is the yarn that's attached to the skein you hold it with your pinky and then we're gonna get our hook we're gonna just insert it into there like that we're gonna single crochet one or that's not a single crochet we're gonna slip stitch and then we're gonna start single crocheting and so we're gonna do seven single crochet. So one, two, three. Okay, now we're gonna close this off and hopefully I have better luck closing this one off than the one that I did earlier for the body. And so I just wanna explain this. So I like to pull out the yarn tail and just have it like in the middle, I guess, of these two. And then if you're holding the magic ring like this, straight forward, you have two strands of yarn, a front one and a back one. And you're gonna go ahead and pull this front one and it's gonna close off the magic ring. And then we're gonna pull this one and you know, hopefully it'll close. Okay, come on, come on, come on. It might snap again. That would be unfortunate because you actually need this to close for the wings. It's closing guys, oh my God. Good, I'm so happy about that because I would have to redo the magic ring if it snapped. <laughs> and so then you have your magic ring. And then for this next round, we're gonna do just seven increases. So. I just need to find my first stitch. So I was kind of backwards. This is my first stitch. So I'll do one single crochet and let's put our stitch marker which I changed out stitch markers and I actually made this earlier and I'm obsessed with it and I'm planning on like uh, selling some more like stitch markers and stuff on my Etsy because they're just so cute and I love it. I can never find any stitch markers that I like and so I love the idea of just making my own and I'm just, I love this one so much. Oh my god, I love it. Okay, anyways, so seven increases all the way around, which increases if you guys forgot. It's just two single crochet into the same stitch. So let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, so you did seven increases all around and you should have 14 stitches. And so that is how you make your wings. What I like to do is I like to slip stitch in the next stitch, which is slip stitches. Hold on, I don't think I explained this at all. But a slip stitch is where you go through your next stitch, yarn under, pull up a loop, and then you just, instead of yarning over and pulling through like a single crochet, you just use this yarn that's on your stitch and just pull through that next one. And so just slip stitch there. And then I like to cut a long uh, yarn tail and then you can sew that in to your bead and you need to make two of these so go ahead and you can rewind the video and make another one of these and then i'm going to make another one and i'm going to explain to you how to sew these on to your bee so i'll see you then okay so i have made both of the wings for my bee and now we're going to get our bee body and we're going to go ahead and sew the wings on and then we'll be done and so we're going to sew the wings between rounds 9 and 10 of the body. And I like to have them like, I think like four stitches apart away from the eyes. So one, two, three, four. And then you like put them right here. I need to go get some pins real quick so I can like map this out, I think. Okay, so I've mapped out. This just looks wrong, but I made these earlier and they're like, oh my god, I'm obsessed. They're called plushie pins. And I need to also put some of these in my Etsy because they're just absolutely a game changer. But this looks so wrong. Oh my god. But I've mapped out where I want to put my wings. And so 
if you count from like what round is this round five i guess so one two three four and then it's like on the fifth round from the eyes is where we're gonna put the wings and then let's see if it's the same on this side so um we have one two three four and then on the fifth round from the eye we're gonna be putting our wings and the wings should be like about two stitches apart so we're gonna go ahead and thread our needle with this yarn from our wings and just letting you know this shorter yarn that's like from our magic ring we're gonna do something with that in just a minute and so like don't cut it off don't sew it in quite yet but you want to thread your needle with the string that we cut off and not this one and so we're gonna have the wings facing this way so the front of them which looks like that and the back looks like this and the back is the part where this yarn is attached to and so we're gonna have the wings facing this way with the front of them facing like facing where i am and so we're gonna go ahead and just attach our yarn i feel like these plushy fins are like knocking over the camera right now <laughs> it's so funny okay so i'm just gonna put my needle in there and sewing can be so intimidating and so i'm gonna try to do this as slowly as i can and like explain it too so we're just gonna put it into that stitch and I feel like I'm also going to do this wrong because I do these wings wrong all the time. And so you have it on there. And then you're going to thread your needle through your wing. And I'm going to do it like right here. Okay. And you just kind of pull that through. And then I'm going to thread my needle into this next stitch. Which is, I'm trying to show this to you guys, but it's like really hard into there which is like the next one over from the one we just threaded our needle through a minute ago so you pull that and then you're gonna put your needle into that next stitch pull it through just like that and then we're gonna like thread our needle through the body so we're just gonna put it in there and then we're just gonna let it out really close to where we're sewing on the wings so i'm just gonna pull it through there and then just let it come out right there and if you guys are better at sewing than I am, which is not hard to do, like, you guys can honestly be better with me with no talent. Because <laughs> I feel like I'm not great at sewing things on. I'm just really, I do it lazily because I I hate sewing. But you guys can sew on the wings however you want and wherever you want. But I'm just showing you the way that I personally sew on wings. And, like, I feel like it's helpful if I explain it for, like, beginners who like don't have their own style of sewing, I guess. And that's a thing, people have different ways of sewing on things. And so I'm gonna thread this needle kind of through like the back of this, and I'm gonna look at the front of the wing and make sure that the needle's not poking through. But we're just gonna thread this through the back of the wing, and then we're gonna kind of thread it also into the body. So you see the tip of the needle? I'm gonna be putting that into the body. And then I'm gonna turn this around. And then I'm going to let the needle out where this yarn is, right here. And so, right about there. And I'm just going to push it through and pull it out. And you should see that thread just disappears. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get these two yarn ends and I'm going to tie them together. I to tie them twice. So one time and then one more time. Just like that. And then I'm going to cut my yarn the two ends like really short just like that and then i like to just tuck them in with my scissors which this looks so wrong but i mean it works it's the most efficient way to do this and so you have successfully attached one of your wings for your bee and it looks so cute now let's go ahead and attach the other wing and in case that was confusing and i didn't explain it well which is very likely I'm going to go ahead and just explain it again with the second wing. So that's less confusion. Just a moment of silence, though. <laughs> moment of silence over. Okay, let's sew on this wing. Okay, so I want this wing to be like two-ish stitches from the other wing. Maybe three. We're going to put it right here because that's where this plushy pin is. And I feel like that's... Let's see if it's even. I don't know, we kind of want this to be even, 
I don't know, I'm a perfectionist, so I kind of need it to be even for my sanity. Does that look even if I put it right there? You know, we're going to go with it. And if it's not even, we can always take it apart. I mean, taking things apart is not always the funnest thing, but we can do it anyways. And so I just, I'm going to take out this plushie pin because it's like too tall for this camera. But we just went into this stitch right here, threaded the needle, and then we're going to thread the needle through this part of the wing right here. And then just pull it through. And then we're going to go ahead and go into this stitch right here, if I can get in there. <laughs> I just like to lift the top of the stitch. And so if you can see, I, I yarn under, and so it creates like an X shape. And so there's like a bottom part to this stitch right here. I like to go into this top like part of it. And it can be a little tricky sometimes, but you got it. And then you just pull your arm through there. And then you thread it through there like that. And let's see if our wings are somewhat even. So I think that's like pretty even, you know, I think it's good. And so we're going to go ahead and do what we did before. And we're going to thread it through the body, just like right here. And we're going to let it out really close to where the wings are. And so... We went ahead and did that and so now we gotta take care of this little tail right here so i'm gonna go through ahead and thread my needle with that okay and then you're just gonna thread it through the wing like we did before just like that and then let it out through the body and then make sure you the needle comes out where this other thread is and there we go. And, oh my gosh, my needle's trying to escape right now. And then we're just going to tie them together. If I can. I'm like struggling to tie this right now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I got it, I think. Okay. Just tie it twice. And then we're going to cut our yarn ends very short. And then we'll tuck it in. Just like that. And go ahead and just keep hitting the camera. I'm sorry, but the camera's literally so close to me, so it's not my fault. It's the camera's fault. Okay, y'all. Okay, and so kind of reposition them however you want. And your wings are on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some blush on mine so you can get um, your pink yarn. And the blush is totally optional. Like if you don't want the blush, that's totally fine. And then your bee is done at this point. But I just like to add the blush because I feel like it adds so much life and character to the bee. So I'm going to go ahead and get my pink yarn and sew on the blush. Okay, so I already went ahead and threaded my needle with my pink yarn. And what we're going to do is I like to just kind of insert my needle like anywhere in the body is fine. But I'm just going to do it in like the front of the face. <laughs> and then you just let your needle out like right there. And I'm going to look at my other bee that I have right here for reference. And so that's about where you need to like insert your needle so i'm gonna go ahead put it in there and blush for me at least because i feel like i suck at it it takes some trial and error trying to figure out where to put it <laughs> some people will probably have more luck than i do and i'm trying to see did i double strand these this blush no that's just a single strand okay we're good and then just put it in there so it's on both sides of the eye and then you're gonna let out your needle somewhere over here in the eye similar to where you had it on this eye so you have it right here and we're going to try to get it in a similar place in this next eye so it kind of looks symmetrical you know it's just like that and then don't pull too hard because if you pull too hard on the yarn the blush will disappear and so i think that is so cute oh my god like highly recommend doing blush because it just adds so much character to your plushie okay and then we're just going to put it on this side of the eye and then I like to let out the needle right where this other strand of yarn is. And again, don't pull too tight. Oh my god, look how adorable that is. I actually got that first try, and it's pretty symmetrical. And then I like to cut off both the yarn. Oh my god, it actually, okay, if bees had nose, like noses, it, it looks like it's like has snot coming out of its nose. But bees, I don't think they do have noses. But I'm going to go ahead and just cut off these yarn tails. 
like that and then just do the same thing like we did with the wings and then you kind of just tie this together twice and then cut it really short like that and then I like to just tuck it in with my scissors okay and your bee is finished congratulations you have finished your bee oh my god i love it but i just have to show you the size difference between the first one i made like a few weeks ago and then this one i literally just made look at how different the size is but this is all tension okay because whenever i made this one i was very relaxed and like casual crocheting whenever i was doing this one onto the tutorial i had a weird setup for filming that tutorial so i had like i was like crocheting like this i don't i don't know why i was doing that but i was just making do with what i had and so that's why there's a size difference tension makes a huge difference in like your finished product but oh my god i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and like congratulations if you guys completed your B. Um, it's so, I love it, I'm obsessed actually. But I hope you guys are as, as obsessed as I am cause it's literally so cute and squishy, I love it. And I hope you guys understood everything that I was explaining in the video. And if you guys have any more questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to do my best to explain everything and answer those questions. And I don't know what else to say, but congratulations again on completing your V plushie and I hope you guys love it and share pictures with me on like Facebook. You guys can message me pictures because it would just make my day to see your finished products um, with my pattern. That's oh my God, it's so cute, but I plan on getting a PDF pattern out there sometime. Keep reminding me because I'm lazy and I'm just going to push it off and procrastinate on it. But if you guys do want a PDF pattern, I'm going to get that out. I'm going to do it. It's going to be on my Etsy, hopefully soon. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And please make sure to like and subscribe. And I'm so sorry that this video came out so late. I, I, don't, I didn't realize how much editing and filming goes into filming a tutorial and all that. And so I'm really sorry. But I do plan on like cutting back on the amount of videos that I'm doing. So usually I would release them once every week, like every Wednesday but I've been really bad at releasing them on Wednesdays recently. And so I've just kind of realized that releasing one video a week is too much for me. And so I think I'm gonna start um, releasing one video every two weeks. And I'm sorry that I have to do that to you guys, but I've just, I wanna have better content for you guys. And the more days that I have to film, I think, like I can improve with, if I, what am I trying to say? Um, I don't know actually my train of thought has left me and so yeah but basically what i'm trying to say with all of this um is that i'm going to be releasing videos once every two weeks now and whenever i get better at like filming content and like uh dedicating time to filming and all that i think i might go back to filming or releasing a video once every week but until then i'm just gonna do it once every two weeks and so yeah but hopefully i can get better content out there in better videos because I know I've, I've been like rushing to put together videos and they haven't been the best and I really don't want to like keep putting out videos that I'm not like satisfied with I guess but anyways I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please like this video and subscribe for more tutorials in the future and I'll see you guys next time goodbye